How's it going guys? Now, I know it's been a while. I've been a bit absent on YouTube over the last couple of months. I do apologize. I've just been super busy to put it simply. Getting time to, to video and edit videos. Uh, I just haven't had it really. So a lot of stuff has, has happened over the last couple of months. But not to worry, it's all kind of stuff that, like silage and slurry, all stuff that's going to be happening again anyway. So I'm going to try to get back into the YouTube a bit um, and keep the videos going. Out here on the multi species, one of my last videos from a few months ago was sowing the multi species. So I thought I'd just give you an update on how that's going because a lot of you were asking. So it's only grazed a few days, it was grazed maybe three or four days ago. It's booming up again, growth is going quite well at the moment. So it actually took the multi species quite a while to come up, uh, longer than I expected, given that the conditions it went in were perfect. There was good moisture, there was great growth. But I suppose often with stitching, uh, it sometimes can be a little bit slow to go. Um, it did come up a bit patchy. There were areas of the field where it didn't come up so well. This area right here, you can see maybe one width of the cedar probably ran out of seed maybe in this particular spot but there were patches over there and at the end where the seed just didn't really take off so what we did with that was we we stitched in after again we just went over those spots came back and just stitched over those two uh, bare patches and I don't think that's the thing with multi-species that's more uh, with stitching then it can be hit and miss sometimes it worked great a lot of time like most of the fields was very good and there was a couple of odd patches you know so that's just I suppose something that comes with it but it has been grazed twice now so it's only grazed a few days ago at this rate this bare patch here you can see the lines coming up that's what was sown so we it was growing it started coming along and we stitched in the bare patches and then grazed it pretty much straight after for the first grazing make sure we get plenty of light to some of that seed that was sown after and then it's been growing well fine no fertilizer put out in it and we did get quite dry and chicory and those plants are known to be more drought resistant we were kind of avoiding rain and um, this field didn't seem to be seem to be going fine uh, compared to the rest and yes it's growing without any fertilizer i've been pretty happy with it like how it's looking now i think the field is well developed there's not too many weeds in it there is the odd dock or thistle here and there um, but we'll uh, we'll deal with them accordingly and it's booming there at the moment of the growth we've got a good bit of rain since we had that little bit of a dry spell where growth slowed down growth just seems to be picking back up again the cows were eating some of the other grass swards and they came into the multi-species and then after that they went to uh, a grass clover sward that had a high content of clover, clover probably one of our highest clover swards at the moment i reckon up 15 20 percent clover maybe that was in it and the cows did pick up by a litre when they grazed these two fields and they actually when they went back to the other stuff the the some of the grass swards that have a lower level of clover and probably need to be mowed than that uh, they went kind of back down to where they were so a big boost in production when grazing the multi-species and the high clover swards that's really really good to see but just looking at the sward um this plant here is the chicory the big leaf the kind of a round over leaf this plant here it's the one that has the lines going up, you know, straight up the leaf. That's plantain. Um, then we have the uh, clover. You can see some, we, we have two types of clover. We have red clover and white clover. So these ones with the bigger leaves and longer stem are the red clover. It grows up a bit higher. And the white clover is the smaller one with the smaller leaves. Both of them fix nitrogen. Uh, oh, here's red clover. That's definitely red clover. Look, big leaf, longer stem. And then you have obviously all the grass in between, so you got your perennial rye grass. There is a bit of timothy in there as well. Normally we try to keep on top of quality of grass, but when it gets into you know late May, June, grass can go into the reproductive phase, which means it gets stemmy, you know, to throw up seed head. And that stem, it's not very digestible, it doesn't produce a lot of milk, it's not great quality feed. So often to kind of get rid of that, we will mow the paddock and we might bale it up or else we'll, if we don't have enough grass to be able to take out some for silage and bale it or whatever, we will just either mow it before the cows go into it and let them eat the grass off the ground or uh, top it after or post mow uh, after the cows graze it to cut down um, any of that crappy stuff that they didn't eat. 
But when weather gets dry, you don't want to be bringing them more into the field because it can help stunt the growth even further. So we didn't get to intervene with a lot of paddocks there lately. So quality hasn't been amazing in a lot of paddocks. Not too bad, but they are needing to be tidied up, which we're doing a good bit now, doing a bit of topping and pre where we can. The tractor is actually coming today to do some topping and pre -mo. He's going to top one that the cows came out of this morning and he's going to pre -mo the one they're going into tonight. I'm not in the milking parlour when he arrives, I, I will get some footage of that, but we're milk recording this evening as well. I will have to be in there for that. I'm after finding this bit of concrete in the field, look here, I saw that, picked it up, must have uh, come off the yard or something with the dung. Now again, on the mixed species, like this is our first time trying it, uh, and I don't know a huge amount about, about it really, so I know some of you were asking questions in the comments last day, and I try to answer them the best I can, but again, just kind of getting to know it. I'd be asking around what other people are doing, what's the research saying to try and learn how to manage it better. But so far, pretty happy with it. It's getting no nitrogen, it's growing well, and the cows are milking well off it. So, so far, so good. But really, to get a full opinion on how to manage it, I have to get a full year and, and more ground into it. So, you know, this time next year, or in two years time, I'll probably have a better understanding of it and it'll have to be three, four, five years time before we really get an opinion on it to see, you know, some of the species will die out over time and uh, to see whether you just go with a grass clover sward there, you stitch back in. Hard to know, only time will tell. Nice bit of clover amongst this. Got a bit of clover after coming now in this paddock, it's great to see, it's actually quite an old sward, so it's great to see, got a bit of clover in it, maybe receded in um, 2007 I think, I'm guessing, I can't remember, it was back around that time anyway. So this sward isn't really that bad quality, you could graze away fine, but I just want to tidy up the pasture a little bit, the cows are milking well, so um, it, it'll pay to, to mow it and keep the quality up to keep the milking well because this stuff right here uh, obviously if you can see on camera if I pull it out you know that it has the seeds thrown up at the top that's all stem it's all it's all just fiber you, you, like you're not going to be able to digest that so you know there is good quality in it it's not heavy at all they would eat that down no bother they would be able to achieve the residual all right but I just want to get that crap off it and have a nice well set up for the rest of the year. I like to ideally mow every paddock at least once in the year, or only once ideally. Here today, and he's got the contractor, and he's gonna pre-mow this field, the cows are coming into now in the next half an hour uh, they're, we're going to be milking there now and the cows are coming straight out here after so he'll be finished by the time the cows are going to come out um, that's ideally what you want primo just before the cows go in so it doesn't dry out too much he's actually going to go to the one they were in this morning as i was saying and he's going to top that one some people ask what's the difference between pre-mowing and post-mowing um, the main difference is the tractor's going to get a bit dirtier when you're post-mowing because the cows have already been there there's dung pads and it's going to splash them around and get some of it on the machinery whereas pre-mowing is a bit cleaner so that's the main difference really um, one thing I would probably recommend there is a sward like this where most of it's pretty good quality there's only a little bit we're tidying up pre-mowing is fine probably better off just pre mow it because um, you keep your tractor clean don't have to wash it because when you pre-mow, uh, it's harder for the cows to pick what they're going to eat. They tend to just eat it all up. So if there's a lot of crap in it that you don't actually want the cows to eat, but you do want to clean off, ideally you want to bale it up. But uh, topping then, or post-mowing is best, so that you'll get it after. Pre-mowing, hard for the cows to pick between the grass. Obviously when it's standing like this, they can go and they can move around that stem and pick all the lovely stuff to see in it. When it's all mixed up like this, it's hard for them to do that, so they tend to just eat the stuff. Too much of a difference, but if there was a lot of crap in it, I would say you're better off uh, post mowing. And the 
challenge with post mowing then is you want to do it straight away like ideally with pre mowing you can do it right before the cows go in that's the best but if you're the day before it doesn't matter too much with post mowing with post mowing you want to get in straight away after the cows have grazed and this is important because the regrowths are going to come back and you don't want to cut regrowths or graze regrowths because it just stunts the grass. So, so ideally pre mow straight before and the cows go in and graze it, or if they're grazing it and then you're post mowing, you want to go in straight away after. The grass will be quicker to come back after grazing as opposed to mowing. So, the post, the pre mowing, a little bit more forgiving with time. What else has been going on on farm? We got a new toy on the back of the 100 here. It's a tenos, uh, it's a mulcher, flail mower, that's what you call it. I'll show you the inside of it here. We got this for um, controlling weeds and that, uh, keep maintained underneath uh, wires and that around the headlands of fields. Gets to this time of year and any weeds that weren't sprayed, you know, they're, they're getting big, they're gonna go to seed. I kind of don't wanna be using too many sprays around the farm. So we decided to got this, keep the place nice and tidy, control the weeds so that they don't spread all over the place and not be relying too much on chemical sprays. Pretty happy with it so far. Um, I will try to get some more footage of that when, when I'm out using it, probably won't be today. But it's been doing a good job. It can, it can cut when it's straight upright and it can also dive down into a, a dike for it mowing the side of a bank. And it moves in now with the tractor. So if you're along a fence line, if you drive the right distance out, you can actually weave in and out of the posts. So pretty happy with it so far. There will be videos to come on that flail mower. We made some purple bales, purple bale plastic. It's for uh, Crumlin's Children's Hospital in Dublin buy the plastic it's purple plastic and it's I think it's maybe five or ten euro extra and and that 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 money goes to uh, Crumlin's Children Hospital and we got the first cut of silage done now I know some of you are going to be very disappointed that I didn't get to video that but second cut will come around we'll get a video on that but there was a good 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 crop in it we were very happy Now the main reason I didn't get to uh, video any of the first cut was because we had two loaders and I was driving one of them, pushing up silage. So I was kind of on the pit the whole time. And of course, when I was kind of out of the swing of making videos, yeah, when it was all go, the camera was neglected. But a pretty big pit of silage. We were really happy with how it, with how it was made. Myself and Andrew on the pit there, we were pretty happy. It hasn't sank that much. It's actually, you know, good shape. It was well packed down with the two loaders on the pit. It worked very well. The silage that was left over was in this area right here, right behind me, out to that channel right there. Um, so we actually we actually moved that back when, when we went at the silage. We pushed that because it had been there for a couple of years and we weren't getting through it. And we want to keep eating from the far side because it's closest to the cubicles. Now, when second cut goes in, It'll go on top of the big pit and it'll come out all the way to that front channel. So it'll fit plenty more in it. Second cut won't be as big as well. So we're just starting to get some milk in there now. Doing the milk for this evening. Recording, we have the sample bottoms here. So as the cow is milking, her number will pop up here and it'll flick between what the liter she's doing and her number. The milk will drip as she's milking into the sample bottle or the sampler or whatever you want to call it. Then you can, when she's finished milking, you will move it over one stage and it'll stir up the sample. Then you move it over another stage and take away the extra milk, leaving you with a small bit of milk at the bottom. And then you turn it to the final stage and the rest of the milk will dribble out the bottom into your sample bottle. And that's it, that's it. A sample for every cow. We do this five times a year and all that data then you can analyze the cow we'll be able to rank all the cows know what production they're doing and it helps with breeding decision breeding decisions and culling and all that's so it very important particularly as well for drying off knowing which cows might need antibiotics to help with any subclinical mastitis or anything linger around there in the background uh, definitely worth doing you need to do at least four in the year so we do five to do one 
it within you need to do it within 60 days of milking to get information on how your dry cow therapy has worked. So you won't have all the cows calved uh, within 60 days. So if you do five, you'll get the first one in within 60 days, the first cow calving, and then uh, every cow will get at least four. Now this tractor behind me, don't get too excited. It's not ours. It's just been out for the last couple of months doing a few tasks with us. Um, mainly spreading slurry, because you know now, R100, the 2500R slurry spreader with the trailing shoe, uh, it's a bit much for her. So that was the main reason we've had this bigger tractor out. It's a, it's a 125, but it's a bigger frame tractor. And we had a 140 here for a little while as well. Um, mainly spreading the slurry and doing a few other tasks but just keeping us going, don't get too excited. We don't own it. <laughs> She's locked at the moment. Um, we have a GPS system from Grass Tech out on demo. Grass Tech have sent this out on demo for me to try out and uh, do some videos on it and tell you what I think about it. I spread a bit of fertilizer with it already, just one of the days. So there will be plenty of videos to see that uh, GPS system in uh, in action so all those videos are to come apologies for the log absence i'm going to get back into it there now um, and try and make some more time for the videos but thanks everybody for watching the video make sure you give it a like and a comment below very much make sure you're subscribed see you in the next one